The global health crisis took a hard blow on the fashion industry. Outlets of several brands filed bankruptcies, while others closed their brick and mortar locations. But with every crisis comes an opportunity. Here to tell us more is Katrina Ong. She's the owner of Flutter Statement Jewelry and one of the members of the Fashion Accessories Makers of the Philippines, or FAMPH. Hi, Katrina! Very nice to meet you. Hello, Valerie. It's nice to meet you too. So, can you tell us briefly how Flutter Statement Jewelry started? So, well, I started making jewelry and I established my brand, just Flutter Statement Jewelry, in 2012. So, we started by making statement with necklaces, which we sold in bazaars and in Facebook. Because bazaars were um, at the peak during those times. And then eventually transitioned into making body jewelries, body vests, body chains, uh, body belts, shoulder jewelries. And then eventually we, we transitioned into bigger statement pieces like cake threads and then embellishments for gowns. So I, I joined Family Age in June 2020. So just to give you a little background of Family Age. So Family Age is it stands for Fashion Accessories Makers. Philippines and it's a non-stop non-profit organization that brings together established brands and designers. It was founded in May 2020 and it's spearheaded by Philippine designers in the accessories category. So the idea is really to come together and establish our relevance in this time of pandemic. So the core of our movement is really to showcase and promote Filipino craftsmanship because Filipino craftsmanship is the extension of our history, of our heritage, and of the ongoing evolution of our culture. So right now, we are a total of 48 brands and counting. We are affiliating with organizations like the, fashion, the Philippine Fashion Coalition, Cebu Fame, and also collaborating with Sidon and DPI, and also Globe My Business and um, other government agencies. What was it like starting with uh, FAMPH? Well, at first, when I started at FAMPH, I, it, in fact, I found it hard to be comfortable because I didn't know much people. I wasn't, and uh, everyone else seems to know seems to know each other already during that time. But eventually, as I got to talk to more and more people, more and more people, um, it became easier to join the activities, and also it, it, it was fun and exciting since then. Mm -hmm. What are the philosophies of the association that helped you with your business? The establishing family age uh, instilled a sense of hope to the hearts of the members. It's really more than, like for now, many of the brands are really impacted with the cancellation of trade shows and um, the closure of brick and mortar boutiques. So the philosophy of family age is really to have a sense of oneness, like a togetherness, so that we can rely on each other for inspiration, uh, for guidance, and also for expert advice that mm -hmm. we can share with each other during the pandemic. During this pandemic, what was the biggest or toughest challenge that you encountered? And how did being a member of FAMPH help you get through it? The toughest challenge I've had is really what is happening right now, which is the pandemic. The pandemic it was really hard. I mean, life is not, business operations were put to a halt. When I joined Family Age, it really helped me with, um, it really helped me a lot because inside Family Age, there are actually certain, uh, a lot of selling opportunities that were um, shared by other members of the organization. Plus, we also have um, other projects like the virtual trunk shows, which, which just happened like last September and I joined the last one. It's good for brand visibility. And also, we also have a weekly e-learning webinars which updates on us with the latest in marketing and digital strategies. Mm. I like that you mentioned that the association is giving you hope. And hope is what we need most right now. Let's now talk about the current global crisis. How do you think the fashion accessory industry can bounce back even slowly after this pandemic? Well, first, we really have to fix our digital presence. I think it's very important to uh, shift your business now to online. We need to start selling online and engage and join all online platforms that you can. That's one. And then the second one is um, 
since uh, for accessories, it's very common for us to rely on B2B, which is business to business selling. So I think it's important to shift our focus now from B2B to B2C, which is business to consumer selling. And third, I think collaboration, like strengthening collaborations is also important. That's why, that's why we made several collaborations uh, as Apar mentioned a while ago. Some people see fashion or accessories as a luxury instead of a necessity, most especially now. So, how do you adapt and thrive in a new world with the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I think it's really more about it's really about going digital and also taking uh, like really joining all the selling opportunities that come. And you've been in the business for eight years already. So, any key lessons that you've learned along the way? What they learned in the fashion accessories sector in the fashion industry is that um, you learn to grow your business and your brand. You really grow as a brand if there are a lot of other designers and brands who are growing and thriving with you. Because the more of us in the industry, the hotter and trendier accessories become. It's really not about competing with other brands. I think my advice is not to compete with other brands because it's, the more brands there are, the more festive and more fun the, the market would be. And then I think if the industry grows, the more brands in the industry grows, then you also grow, your brand also grows. So I think just focus on yourself and, and your beliefs. Thank you very much for talking to us, Katrina, and may your business and fan PH thrive and flourish during this time. Thank you.